Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. Now, today I'm going to show you how I have changed up just a little bit how I use the shack. Uh, there we go, Shaq. Incredible rope machine for making twisted cords. This thing is just great. It's a brilliant piece of kit. But I have switched out just ever so slightly to make it a little bit more efficient. So I've got myself set up here on this wonderful old ironing board that I got at a garage sale. It's wooden and sturdy, uh, but I, I, I have a collection of ironing boards. Shh, that's a secret. Well, not so secret now, but ironing boards make the most wonderful work surfaces. So I have clamped my um, the paddle end to the ironing board with a, um, a spring clip, a spring type clamp. They're great, and that, that's going to hold it in place for me. Now, uh, sometimes what I will use, if I'm using my um, metal ironing boards, you know, they're hollow underneath, so I stick a wooden block underneath so that this will clamp more easily to it. Now, you're also going to need scissors, and the, um, the secret weapon in all of this is the um, craft needle. Of course, you need yarn. And then at this end of the board, I've clamped the peg mechanism to the end of the ironing board. And I like to use non-slip, that non-slip stuff that you get um, for uh, keeping things from sliding around, you know, whether it's in cupboards or keeping your... What we use it for is when my husband is rehearsing his uh, flamenco group here, we put this on the floor and put masonite on it so the dancers can dance on it without falling on their keisters. So, hey, this stuff's wonderful. Anyhow, away from flamenco and back on to cords, I'm going to get uh, the, actually one of my husband's mic stands and put the camera on that so that I can show you more easily what I'm going to be doing. I've made a slip knot and I've placed it onto the first of the hooks on the um, paddle section. And now I'm going to go around peg A, back to the center hook. And I'm just making a very short cord right now, but usually, well, depends on what you want. Sometimes you'll make a longer one. So you go around the middle peg, between the two pegs, back to pe hook three, and... Now you're going to come all the way around, push these right down. I'm only using one strand, but you can use more strands held together. Now, because I'm holding the camera right now, it's hard for me to show you what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to stop the camera and put it on the mic stand so that I can use two hands. I'm going to snip the thread from the yarn from the ball. And set that aside. And now I'm going to tie the end onto the, pa uh, the hook. And I'm going to move those back out of the way for now. I'm going to release my clamp and cavalierly throw it away. Now I'm going to count... I'm holding with my left hand, which is my non-dominant, and I'm going to count how many times I bring, I've got the, um, the handle is down at the moment, so that's going to be one. Okay, and I'm going to turn counter, um, I'm going to turn clockwise, and I'll count how many times I've turned it. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sort of. I've, well, sorry, I was looking away and I lost track. But usually I count um, if I'm wanting to make cords that are the exact same length, uh, two cords or four cords that are the same length. Then I do count, but um, that's when I have the brain bandwidth to actually count, and I don't have 
a million things going on thinking, oh, I need to talk to them about this, that or the other. So now what I'm going to do, it's looking, see when I tilt this way slightly. Oh, no, it's not allowing me to tilt slightly. There, okay, it's looking really sproingy and when I release it, it should kink up. Yeah, there, it's kinking up quite nicely. So that says to me, this little darling is ready to go. And I just realized that for this moment I need to clamp this again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to slide the camera down to here. And I'm going to lift, I'm going to put my fingers into the ends there, and I'm going to now pinch those together, and I'm going to encourage the cord to twist. I'm still putting a light bit of pressure on it and I've let go of the cord now and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread the ends of the strands into the craft needle and I'm going to take them, okay, <laughs> they just pulled themselves out. So what I'll do is I'm going to insert the craft needle into the hook and I'm lifting this one off the hook, second one off the hook onto the craft needle, third one off the hook and onto the craft needle and I'll stroke the cord and turn this down again so we can go a little flatter on here and I'm encouraging the twist to go all the way up to the craft needle. This means I'm not going to have to tie a knot and waste yarn and make a tassel if I don't want a tassel. Now I fold the ends over. It's easier to thread a needle with um, a folded bit of yarn than the ends. So the ends have now gone through the needle, the, hook, the eye. I pull it through and voila, I have a clean finished end on both ends of my twisted cord. So, whoops, that one looks a bit gooby there. I'll just keep flicking at it with my thumbnail. And now I have a beautiful twisted cord with clean finished ends at both ends. I don't have to tie a knot. I don't have a big lumpy tassel at the end that's not... Um, that's fine if I wanted one, but I don't. And so there you have it. Noreen's special way of making clean finished cords on the wonderful, well-named, incredible rope machine from Shaft Lobes. So there you go. I'll just take this off so we can actually do the... See? There it is. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? So fast. I love it. So... Happy rope making, happy cord making, and have a wonderful time playing with yarn. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.